Life of Marie Tagliani by Adrian Fisher. Okay, well, Marie Tagliani was the first dancer to make point work really popular, um, and she was known for her graceful arms and being, like, really light on her feet. And since during her time, ballet was, like, kind of new, and so she made it really enjoyable for people who didn't really know who, what it was. So in 1804, Marie Tagliani was born in Stockholm, Sweden, and her entire family had a history in the arts. Her dad was a choreographer, and her mom was a singer, and her dad taught her ballet, and um, she was known for her port de bras, which was taught to her by her dad because she had a back problem, and so she would always have one arm over her head, and she would be in a fourth position, um, leaning forward, and with her shoulders slightly turned a face with um, her forefinger by her chin like that, and that became like her signature move, and it's used a lot in dances today. In 1822, her family moved to Vienna and that's when she made her first appearance in one of her father's dances. And that's where she made her later rival, Franny Essler, who would also danced in this piece. In 1827, she was offered a deal for the Paris Opera um, for a three-year contract to be a company member. She could do a few dances before she became a company member, and so she did a pas de deux with her brother. And it had a lot of point work, and so after that, she got a 10-year contract with um, the Paris Opera. Um, and then in 1832, she danced in another one of her dad's pieces, and that was during her first year at, with the Paris Opera, and she, for the first year, she couldn't do any, like, big parts, and so she did little parts in, like, Sleeping Beauty and Le Douai et La Bayardère, and her father still taught her ballet, and he made sure the choreography like highlighted her special gifts as a dancer. And during one of her dad's pieces, Eugene Lamy designed one of her costumes and it was a fitted bodice which showed her shoulders and her chest and a flowy skirt that went down to about mid-calf and with pink tights and that became like the standard costume for ballerinas. In 1837, she traveled to Russia and the Russians liked watching her dance because it made them think of like good times and put them in a good mood. And she also traveled to Britain, Italy, Austria, France, Belgium, and Sweden. In 1847, she made her farewell performance, and it was called Le Judgment de Paris. And um, after that, she didn't perform anymore, but she would teach other girls like how to dance like her. And one girl who was really good at dancing like her was named Emma Livery. And she basically became like the second Marie Taglioni. And one day Emma's dress caught on fire and she got really badly burned and she died a couple months later. And so she couldn't do the dance and she and Marie Taglioni couldn't teach it to anyone else because no one else could do it, right? She was later appointed dance inspector at the Paris Opera and then she became one of the professors. In 1860 she lost all of her money due to mismanagement of her um, funds and she opened a place for ballroom dancing in London and then in 1880 she retired and lived with her son Georges and then died peacefully in her home. Basically she set the basic positions of the body and set the standard look of the ballerina which was the dress to mid-calf with um, pink tights and she added a lot of like fluidity and bounce to her dancing and so yeah. Next thing you know, there's magic in